Hi, I'm Neil Redfern. I'm the Principal Inspector of Ancient Monuments for Historic England in Yorkshire. Um, my job is to help people um, manage and develop um, historic places and to understand what really makes them significant. And uh, I'm currently a member of the advisory group uh, for the City Council looking at uh, their plans that are emerging for this area. And one of the really critical things that I've been um, trying to help them shape and understand is just what makes this place significant and what makes it significant in terms of its history and its heritage and um, what's been great is we have a number of tools that we use to actually help people understand that and actually tell the story of this place and I think one of the really disappointing things about this place is actually how so many of the stories are actually inward. They're kept by people and they're not actually really expressed or told. Yes, we have Clifford's Tower as a visitor centre. Yes, we have the museum, the Castle Museum as, as a museum. But really understanding this place and what went on in this place um, is really um, untold. Um, I particularly like this point because we're actually looking into to the historic Eye of York. This, this, this place was where the three ridings of Yorkshire came together. It's you know, symbolically the heart of Yorkshire. Um, it is where Yorkshire MPs were always traditionally elected. However, it's also the sense of the Eye of York as it's where royal prerogative, royal governance of the north of England was actually imposed uh, on this part of England by the Normans after the Norman conquest in 1066 and what they did is they basically swept away that early medieval city, that Roman city and imposed a Norman Motton Bailey castle. Then over the years what, what happens is that place evolves so that by the time you get into the Georgian period in the 18th century they establish it as the seat um, of governance and of judicial um, power and judicial uh, responsibility. So you have buildings like the debtors building built, you have the Assizes Court which is now the Crown Court and you have the women's prison. And then in the 1830s you get this extraordinary felons prison being built and that, that the main hub of that prison is actually would have been located behind me where the actual car park is now. And what's so fascinating if you look back at historic views you can actually see how this relationship still exists today and the bits that are actually missing. So you have the Assizes Court, you have Clifford's Tower and then you have the Governor's House. Now that's the bit that's actually been demolished but behind it you can clearly see the steeple of St Mary's Church in Coppergate, you can see the, um, uh, the, the um, Tower of All Saints um, pavement and then you can also see York Minster in the background and that tells me a really clear story that the governor, the people who were in charge here were making a direct link back to the royal prerogative of Clifford's Tower as a royal castle and a direct link back to the church. This was a place that controlled your life and for many many people it controlled your death. From 1802, this is where York Gallows was actually situated, initially behind the prison, uh, sorry, behind the Assizes Court, and then ultimately the final drop was at the end of the women's prison. Have you ever wondered what the white door at the end of the prison was? It is the final drop. That is where you would have been taken to be executed if you were um, so charged. And again, this place has all these stories about, about people. Um, what I like so much about it is that through work that the museum have done we've actually got the names of these people, the crimes the, that they were committed for and when they were actually executed and they, they range right from, from people we would consider as very important historical figures like Robert Ask to very very humble ordinary citizens and one of my favourite stories is about this guy called David Hartley who was actually um, executed for forgery, for coin forgery and for actually um, effectively creating so many uh, fake coins that he almost brought the British economy down in the in the 18th century um, but that also links this place to other places in Yorkshire David Hartley if you go to Calderdale and you go to the town of Hepton Stall you'll find his grave there he's actually known as King David Hartley okay is that a measure of how he was seen in his community for what he did this place is full of stories actually bringing those stories out so people can actually understand them and understand how we might relate to this place today is really important. 
and we've done that through trying to create a statement of significance which we've shared um, with the City Council, with the advisory group, and we've shared with people who've been uh, coming around the site today, which, is, which has been really great. But these stories are very much alive when you know them and you can actually trace them through the fragments of the buildings and the sites that are now left. I think uh, the thing about the Eye of York to me is it's a place about people. Um, the stories that you read about people who might have been executed here, the voting that went on um, here to elect MPs, the way people came and promenaded around this place um, is, is really clear. Those people, their names are known and in many cases their final moments, their death is actually known about and what happened to them. If you ask me what would I most like to see, uh, or the biggest challenge here, it's actually how people are able to move around this place. And I think the car park here is the biggest challenge we absolutely have. It is just such a detractor to all the heritage values that exist in this place. It just doesn't enable this place to live. It blocks off access to the museum. It makes you misunderstand what Clifford's Tower is. It can create a huge barrier between this place, this heart of York, this heart of York with the eye of the ridings, the eye of York and the rest of the city and I think that's a real detriment to the role York can play as an international tourist destination, it, a role it can play for its own citizens, for having a place where they can come and celebrate and actually um, commemorate the events that have actually gone on here and that's really important because far and away what I'd like to see about this place in five years is it full of people. It's about people. It's about people exploring their stories, but it's about people sitting down and having fun and doing creative things because all of the responses we need to solve this problem have to be creative.